Hey, how you guys doing? Welcome to Rashar with the reactions. So Casual Geographic has concluded that moose are the greatest threat to national security. We're going to look at this video and find out why. Be sure to hit the like button and subscribe. Let's dive on in. Moose are one of those animals. Now what do I mean by that? I mean that you could look at this picture 900 times and a 900 and first we'll still put bricks Imagine seeing that so when you're fact, driving. That would be terrifying. One of the first animal videos I ever made was dedicated to how much of a middle finger this was to my peace of mind. And what was true back then is still very much true today. At up to 1,700 pounds and 7 feet tall, at the shoulders, the moose is always going to be one of those animals God forgot to put a size cap on. Moose are part of the Capriolinae deer family. Only problem is this roid deer is closer in size to an elephant than to a full-grown bambi. And because you probably uh -huh. think I'm blind, the largest Alaskan moose ever caught was 1,808 pounds and 10 feet tall if you count the antlers. Wow. But like, why wouldn't you? Moose are broken in many ways, but the most obvious is how god big they are. Oh, yikes. Ooh. The problem with being built like a truck with antlers is that very few things in nature have the ability or the audacity to ever try to check you. And while moose calves are obviously vulnerable to predators, there just aren't enough things in the world that are bold enough, desperate enough, or stupid enough to want smoke with a full-grown bull moose. And while wolves might hunt them, even a wolf pack will hesitate to test a healthy male moose's ability to turn you into past tense. Yeah. And as solitary hunters that occasionally get their shit pushed in by smaller animals like the guanaco, most cougars won't even bother with a full-grown moose. In some places, grizzly bears have been known to murk adult moose, but when the only thing in your area code that has even a chance of humbling you is literally one of the largest predators on the planet, that is a problem. And if you're 10 feet tall, pushing 2,000 pounds, wearing tree branches for a hat, a bear isn't going to try you unless it's its last possible option. Which is why one of the biggest threats to a healthy, full-grown, aggressive bull moose is an even bigger, aggressive bull moose. Mm. And that's because in what I can only describe as a dick move from nature, the same antlers that help it get laid are often what gets it laid to rest. Sometimes fighting males will get their antlers locked together, and that's basically a death sentence. Oh. Those two moose that are stuck together and can't break free will either starve to death, die of exhaustion, or a lucky bear will find them and take the two for one. Exhibit A, mm. these are two male moose that got locked together and ended up freezing in a lake. And speaking of lakes, moose can swim. Because of course they can. I don't know who told them, but moose somehow figured out there's a good amount of food in lakes, so they'll dive up to 20 feet down to feed on the aquatic plants and vegetation at the lake bottom. It's better wow. swimmers than me, it's really not uncommon to see a moose swimming in an inlet connected to the sea or phelps in between islands as they search for food. And at this point, you probably know exactly what direction this video is about to go in. Because this yeah. right here is how this ends up happening. Because the moose is basically defenseless in the water, and because orcas always choose violence, the killer whale is the only known marine predator of the moose. To be fair, Greenland sharks have been found with moose remains in their stomach, but for my mental health, we're going to assume the moose were already dead. But the truly messed up part is the only reason the moose even put themselves in this position is because they were looking for food. It's like finding a shortcut to stop and shop and then getting clapped in the car at a red light on the way there. Pretty and much. since orcas don't see humans as a reliable food source, at least once in the history of mankind, some guy lived through this and probably never slept well ever again. So his therapist drives a Bentley. And that's basically a walking snowplow, an adult moose can sprint through six feet of snow at about 15 miles per hour. Those numbers might not wow. mean much to you, but I can personally guarantee you this video will. Now ask yourself what's scarier. 15 this miles per hour is pretty fast. It could be running from. And then there's this. I don't even really know how to describe this. Two options, either the water's shallow or that's Jesus Christ in moose form. Yeah, right. Messiah, if you will. <laughs> For an animal that's dead ass big enough and tall enough to have its own Wi-Fi, moose can sprint at top speeds of 35 miles per hour. Uh -uh. Usain Bolt at his best, max out at just under 28 miles, meaning not even he could run from the smoke. Now, there's probably two reasons why you've never seen a moose run at top speed. Well, number one, well, when you're built like a they're tree, not scared of there's anything. a whole lot in the world you need to run from. Right. And number two, anyone that manages to motivate a several hundred pound moose into breaking an Olympic record probably isn't going to be alive to talk about it. Right. In a country with bears, cougars, and Florida, the most dangerous animal of all is a 10-foot vegan with antlers. But it's not really their fault. Moose are deer, and as a rule, deer are just menaces to society. In America, deer cause about 1 million car accidents a year and about 1 billion That deer just the looks angry. <laughs> and the moose is by far the worst deer to hit. On a scale from 1 to absolutely f***, your bunkmates would want to get this antler grim reaper's ever on the road with you. They say you should never swerve to avoid hitting an animal 95% of the time because you can lose control of your vehicle and end up hitting something way worse. That 5% is reserved for when this is on the road because if your choices are hitting a moose or swerving, then your next choices are opened or closed casket. And because moose are so disrespectfully tall, hitting a moose often means taking out his legs. The bigger you are, the harder you fall. Only problem is moose are so goddamn big that they can often fall through your windshield and then put you on a headline. Uh. The worst part is because they're so tall, their eyes don't reflect in your headlights the way they would for a normal sized deer. That combined with their blatant disregard for anyone else's life means in moose country, you can easily go from a person to a pack faster than you can break. According to the internet, if you're about to hit a moose, the best advice is to slow down, don't swerve, and pray to whoever you believe in. 
Just know that if it ever comes down to your car versus a moose, the moose, moose might walk away, but you're not coming out of there without wings and a halo. But of course, moose don't need to be on the road to put you on a stretcher, and this is what makes them worse than the cougars and bears of the world. Predators like mountain lions or grizzlies don't normally see humans as happy meals, so most encounters are either territorial because some dude was either unlucky enough or stupid enough to get too close to their cubs. These guys, these guys are different. Different as in no river dance all over your back, and they don't really need a reason to do it. As big as they are, they're still a very much valuable prey animal, especially it's like you said, they're menaces. Sick. And due to the generational trauma of being constantly hunted, moose are naturally wary, Look at those which makes antlers. them much more likely to oh, attack man. unprovoked. It gets worse when people forget that they only have one chance at life and attempt to waste it by feeding a moose. This often leads not just moose, but wild animals in general to associate humans with food, and with association mm -hmm. comes expectations. A moose that's constantly been fed by humans is only going to expect food whenever it sees them. In a moose's head, it just makes sense. And failing to meet a moose's expectations is exactly how heaven gains angels. But a moose is at its most volatile when it's in rut. For those of you that don't know what rut is, rut is when male animals like camel or deer experience a surge in testosterone, which causes them to become more aggressive and more interested in me. Ah. For those of you that already know what rut is, I know how you know. I know how you know. And Actually, for moose, surge in testosterone turns them into 10-foot frat boys on spring break, and sometimes they cause just as much damage. Every year in America and Canada, people visit the emergency room because they got too close to a moose, and that moose decided to play hopscotch on their back. <laughs> that was a good idea, sometimes man. Sometimes moose cut out the middleman completely and just pull up to hospitals themselves. Wow. <laughs> that girl, whoever's laughing, she does not realize how much danger she's in. Because moose are such a roadblock on the highway of life, once upon a time the USSR actually tried to domesticate these deer on steroids and then ride the tanglers into battle on a moose cavalry. Results were mixed. Once again, as a prey animal, the moose were naturally terrified of gunfire, and many of them refused to allow themselves to be ridden into battle. Not to mention the moose were much more susceptible to diseases and much harder to feed than horses, so yeah, it was up for that. But there had to have been one kid that joined the military to pay for college only to have his ops pull up on a whole ass moose. If we're being honest here, that story just says more about the Soviet Union than it does about the moose. But back to the moose, are overgrown all-terrain vehicles with legs, antlers, and audacity, and probably the reason Canadians are so polite. Their landlords are moose, and they pay taxes to geese. You'd be humble too. Pretty sure this is the part of the video where I'm supposed to tell y'all to subscribe. Have a nice day. Alright, so moose drop their antlers every year but grow them back in the spring because they use them to flex for females. And at first the antlers grow inside this soft skin with tiny hairs called velvet. But eventually the moose has a surge of testosterone where they basically become 7 foot frat boys on spring break. That's when the velvet sheds and the bones of the antlers harden. The velvet stays on the antlers for about 3-4 to four months until the moose rubs up against trees and bushes to remove them. Which is why they look like they bundied somebody. Uh, as much of I a hate see. crime as this looks like, it doesn't hurt the moose at all and it's a lot like snakes shedding their skin. If anything, it's more like an annoying itch. Also, when a bull moose wants to pull a female, they use cologne just like you and me. Except their version involves digging a pit, peeing into the pit, and then rubbing and splashing a golden pool all over their antlers the R. Kelly way. Clearly they know what they're doing because smelling liquid sunshine causes the female moose to ovulate because nature's just weird like that. I can dig it. Get your eight minutes. Imagine for a minute you're driving your car down the road, right? And as you're driving, you come across a moose. A seven foot tall animal that's close to 2,000 pounds. Now luckily you don't hit the moose. You manage to avoid it. But now you have to worry about that big mass of existence attacking you. Imagine how terrifying that must be. And then if you're unlucky enough to hit that moose, you could total your car. Cause I mean, think about it. It's almost 2000 pounds, right? And the average small car is about 2,600 pounds. So that moose is almost the equivalent of a small car. Let me know if you guys have ever seen a moose in person down in the comments below. And that's today's video. Thanks for watching guys. Have a good day.